So this is the best reason I can give you on why you should install Scratch 1.4 if you want to as an option to program on Scratch. And this is multiplayer uh, um, using um, LAN instead of global variables on the internet. So you don't need to make a Scratch account. You don't need to make alternative projects and wait a bit to use global variables. You can just start with it and you can play with your friends in the same room if you're on the same Wi-Fi. So if you um, shift click share, you see there's just share this project online and go to Scratch website. So what you want to do is shift click all on the Scratch logo and turn fill screen off. That will give you this white border. Right click the white border, open, browser, Scratch UI panes, Scratch frame morph, menu slash button actions, and add server commands too. Okay, so this will give you this text here, and we want to change the second line, just where it says true, only true, um, to false, all lowercase, F-A-L-S-E. Okay, and that's it. Okay, right click the text, accept, and search your initials. Don't know why it does this, but I'm putting in mine. Okay, save. Great. And now if we close it and shift click share, it should say this, which it does. Post mesh and join join mesh also. Great. So now we shift click all again. Turn fill screen on. Um wait a bit to load everything. And then shift click all again. Save image for end user. Sometimes it doesn't save properly. If it doesn't, just repeat these two steps. And yes. Great. So now that should close scratch. Uh, open it up again and it should still be there great so what this is as I said earlier is multiplayer so let's make a simple movement program uh, we'll have green flag to go to zero zero to or organize everything again uh, we'll have when left hour pressed and we'll have move minus 10 steps and Right hour pressed. Move 10 steps. Easy. Great. So that should just be a simple movement program. Yeah, great. And then also you can press enter to activate the green flag, which I think is pretty cool. So we're going to add broadcast and receives. And you'll see why in a, in a minute or so. So we're going to call this left. And we're going to call this. And we're going to make another one. And we're going to call it white. And when I receive left. And when I receive right. Great. And now it should still be the same thing. Maybe a bit slower. But that's fine. So we're going to save this because you need to save this in order for it to um, work. So we're going to call it multiplayer example. save great so now we are going to open up another project and we are going to pretend this is someone else on a different computer because it's the same output the same outcome so we're going to have a green flag forever and we're going to have an if else um, so we would have it say nothing here and we're going to have it say left here and we're going so this is for touching mouse pointer so this is like a remote um, exact for as my example that I'm using first of all so if touching mouse pointer say left and we want it to broadcast so this is one of the original uses for broadcast makes sense because it's broadcasting uh, and we're going to call it left okay and we're going to say left and we're going to clean you up because I want to clean you up, duplicate, and we're going to change you to costume 2, and change you to right, or IG great, so now if I press the green flag, you should be left, you should be right, great, okay, so now I'm going to go into split screen, pretend this is one, this side is one computer, 
this side is another okay so I'm going to shift click share and I'm going to say host mesh that gives me my IP address on the other computer shift click share join mesh okay I'm going to type in the IP address 192.168.1.5 it this will be different for everyone because everyone has a different computer and everyone is on a different um, location okay so I'm gonna hit OK and so now hopefully if I um, have everything done right and I click the green flag yeah great as you can see it's broadcasting right and left whenever I touch the mouse and that's uh, one thing and just to show you if to see if it's a okay, case sensitive so if it is and it isn't so you can uh, just have it be uh, all caps or lowercase if you want whatever and it's still going to be the same thing that's nice to know okay and the other thing it can do is as well as broadcast it cannot uh, do the it does not broadcast the green flag so if we press the green flag here no matter how many times um this guy's not going to go to zero zero and you see yeah just again just to make sure because he was pretty close to the center no matter how many times but here if i click it great and the next thing is variables so if we make a variable here we'll call it test and we'll have set test to and the trigger will be when space is pressed i want you to ask a question the question will be just say something okay and after we'll put it into the stage okay and set test to the answer okay and so we have a variable called test here and if we go to sensing all the way down to slide a sensor value if we look at this it'll show you a bunch of stuff this here as far as i'm remember is for lego we do most of this so and down here though is test the name of the variable so um we want it to be that and this basically is the same as detect so this is detecting the variable here so we want it to always say the variable for fun so forever when the green flag is pressed and let's clean up let's just go large and we will start the green flag and make you go large too and if we have this face and if you press face say something and um, hello there and he changes to hello there press face again and he changes and you can use this to um well, to multiplayer and that's pretty cool in my opinion and here's an example so it doesn't have just have to be one guy and a remote it can be two players so if or multiple players depending on how far you're willing to go so if we go to template a uh, 2d physics engine this, this is a template i made ages ago um so this is a 2d physics engine and it just has two sprites one of them you can move the other you can't and it's pretty simple movement thingy okay and there was no there was no way to actually move the other guy okay they're both um they're separate but if i open it here so these guys are still connected through the mesh because i didn't unconnect i should say so disconnect i'll show you how to do that, do that later so if we load the 2d same program okay and press the green flag for both of them just to make sure everything's good okay so if i on the left i should be moving one guy which i do okay and if i click on the right so the right guy can control player two and that's multiplayer and it's a physics engine because you can try jump on people and it, there will be some delay because internet so not everything will be perfect so like if you change left and right a lot quickly where they will be will be different and but you can do stuff to get around that like have it be torn based maybe or something or if you be or broadcast there 
coordinates of each player, so they would teleport there every so often, like every five seconds or so. Same thing that happens in real life, in in online games, uh, when you get lag spikes or whatever. And so to disconnect, if you're host, if you're joining the mesh, shift click share. Um, you can also show the IP address. Okay, it's going to be the same IP address no matter which one I click because it's the same computer, but it's um, going to show the IP address you're with, and then leave mesh. And now if I move around, shouldn't affect him, and vice versa. And if you're hosting the mesh, you can show the IP address whenever you want also, but you can also stop hosting the mesh, and that just ends multiplayer so you can go single player again. And um, that's multiplayer done. I uh, don't want to save. And we're going to open up the multiplayer example we made earlier. My projects. Multiplayer example. Okay, so if we hit edit, you will see there is on delete start single stepping and set single stepping. You may not actually know what these do. So if we um, so this is the equivalent of turbo mode in this. As you can see, you can do turbo speed, so everything moves super fast. There's normal speed, but then there's also flash blocks fast and flash blocks slow. So these slow down the code, and it lights up every block as it does its operation. So this can be used for if you are having trouble with something and it's not working, and you can light them all up. So let's just show turbo speed. I'm not sure if that's going to change anything right now. Yeah, it doesn't. Uh, because of just how it works. If we get something like a timer, I'm assuming. Uh, forever, make it very much timer. Actually, is the timer just faster? Nah, doubt it. Nah. Okay, forever, change timer by one. And if we start this, yeah, it should get to it should go up super fast. If we go to normal speed. It should be a lot slower, as we expect. Great. And just to show you, that's normal speed, and that's turbo speed. So it is much faster. Okay, so if we go to normal flash blocks, it'll show you what it's doing. So if we have... Yeah, if we add more code, so set timer to zero. Uh, that's not even in the code. Uh, move 10 steps, turn 15. Um, move 10 steps 2015 yeah that, that's easy to see we'll just duplicate all this uh, yeah, sure. yeah as you can see that's easy to see but it does it in a loop and then we can go even slower if you want and you can go, this is how you can debug if you have any problems and every other version just has turbo mode, which, yeah, crazy, haha. <laughs> and you can start st single stepping also, and stop single setting, stepping. Yay, don't you love turbo mode? Okay, let's stop everything. And that's about it. Um, the link to the in uh, installer for Scratch 1.4 will be in the description and same with the website that um, it tells you all about mesh I can't explain it all here because I don't understand it all and just, I'm not I'm just here to show you um, how you can do a simple multiplayer uh, thanks for watching